Today I want to quickly show you how to use the stars to navigate and you don't need to be able to identify the North Star, you know, Polaris and it will work virtually anywhere even when some of the, you know, most of the sky is cloudy. Now, the most common way that people use the stars to navigate when they're doing land navigation for sailing, by the way, it's totally different is to find the North Star and then you'll know which way is north and so you'll have the cardinal points, you know, north, south, east and west and from that you'll be able to do some loose navigation. But to do this, you'd actually need to know how to find Polaris. Also, the north sky has to be clear and you have to live in the northern hemisphere. But there is another way and the general idea is as the stars rotate around the sky each night, if you can see which direction they're moving, you'll be able to tell which direction you're facing when you're looking at them. So let's imagine that we've got a star. There's a star here and it's going to go in a circular motion around the sky. Initially, it will go left and then it will go left and down, then just down, then down and right, right, up and right, up on its own and then up and left and then it's back to going left again. So you can see why this type of star navigation is so simple. All you need to remember is up, down, left and right. But the stars move across the sky very, very slowly. So we'll need a method of checking where the star is now and also checking where it will be, you know, sometime later. And that way we'll know which direction the stars moved. Now, so the first thing we're going to need to do is find a star, almost any star will do. And then we need a method of somehow making a record of its exact direction from our location. Many, many years ago, when I was in the Boy Scouts, the leader showed us how to do this. And he said that you needed two poles, a long one and a, sh a short one about half size. So that's like this one here and this one here is what I've got my torch for. He would carefully position the poles so that he could use the, the tips of the poles, this, this section here, um, as some sort of rifle sight aiming at the star. And I remember this system worked really well. You know, I've seen this method demonstrated by lots and lots of people on lots and lots of videos and websites. I mean, but come on, <laughs> let's have a look at this. You know, how many people carry a pole like this, you know, when you're out strolling around the hills? You know, let's keep things in the real world. You know, mind you, some people do carry walking poles, so I suppose you could use them, but I don't tend to carry them very often. In the real world, you can use virtually anything in your rucksack, you know, as long as it's got an identifiable point and it'll stay in the same place for, you know, a reasonable amount of time. You don't have to use two items either. You know, one will do fine, you know, to fix the star's location. And it's much easier just to use one. As an example, I could use, I don't know, the top of the handle on my flask or, you know, the corner of my rucksack if it's balanced onto a rock or a blade from my uh, Leatherman knife. Anything will do. As long as your head is in exactly the same place each time, you know, when you line it up from your item to the star, you know, that will give you a record of exactly where the star is. So it's getting, <laughs> I say it's getting dark. Once again, I'm up a mountain <laughs> in the dark. So just to make this a little bit easier to understand and so you can see what's actually happening, happening I'll, I'll return here to this exact spot tomorrow and I'll go through how it's done in the daylight. Okay, I've come back to where I was last night and it may be slightly difficult to do any star navigation in the daytime, but there is one star that is visible 24 hours a day. And due to refraction from the upper atmosphere, it's actually visible anywhere on Earth. So you need to know where to look. So I'll, I'll show you where this star is. And this is it. As you can see, this is our star. This star is visible all over the world at any time of day. So I need to fix the position of this star. And then after it's moved, I need to see in which direction it's moved. I'll need something that I can place over the star visually um, so that I can fix its position. So let's have a look in my rucksack. <laughs> I must, honestly, you don't need any special equipment for this. Let's have a look what I've got. I've got, I've got my flask, which I do appreciate is too big. What else have I got? First aid kit. I don't know, there's so much stuff. Oh, this will do. I've got my water bottle. Um, I'll just bring this over to you. As you can see, the water bottle, has a, um, a hole 
in the top of it. So if I position this water bottle so that I can look through the hole and see the star, then I'll have a definite fix on that star's position. I'll position my water bottle sort of there and then crouch down and I should be able to see the star. I can see the star directly through the hole. To make sure that I'm always looking in, a, in the same direction, what I'll do is I'll put my chin in this small dip in the rock here. And to make sure that I always use the same dip, I'll put a cross on it, I'll mark a cross. So now I'm looking down and I can actually see the star directly through the center of the hole in the top of the water bottle. So now I just need to have a cup of tea and uh, wait 15 or 20 minutes until the stars move position. I've had my cup of tea. I've waited about 15, 20 minutes and the star itself has moved. Just a quick point on that topic. The further away our star is from Polaris, the North Star, the more it will move across the sky and so you'll have to wait less time. I can see that the star has moved down and left and this tells me that that direction is northwest. So how does all of this work? Well, we're all familiar with the standard compass rows, which gives us our cardinal directions on a compass. But for this type of star navigation, we need to replace north and south with left and right, and also replace east and west with up and down. If we imagine our star as starting in the center of the rows, the direction that it's moved will tell us the direction that we were facing when we were looking at the star. Mind you, you know, normally we think of north being up and south being down, but this isn't a compass, this is star movement. So don't forget, north and south are left and right, east and west are up and down. So today, as our star moved slightly left and down, that means that I was facing northwest, okay? And if, if that's northwest, then that must be north, that must be south, east and west. So we've now got our cardinal directions on the compass. So that should, you know, if we had to work, walk in a certain direction, we'd know which way we had to go. Now, just a couple of quick points on this. If the star doesn't appear to move that much, it probably means that you're facing two, you know, too northwards, too northerly, too far north, you know what I mean. Anyway, you're probably looking almost at Polaris. If it doesn't move at all, it probably is Polaris. But what you do in this case is choose a different star, you know, at 90 degrees, not too low on the horizon and not too high in the sky, sort of midway, because those ones tend to move the most. Another thing, you can't use this for complex navigation. You know, all this will do is give you the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, and maybe southeast, northwest, you know, that sort of thing. So don't forget, last bit, north and south are left and right, east and west are up and down. Thanks for watching.